Hello and welcome to Wally Boyle. In a previous video, I demonstrated some mitre clamps. But somebody left me a comment and said they can't afford these things. No, because they're too expensive. I don't have a lot of money. Oh, I thought to myself, I understand that. Yeah, especially these times with inflation and what have you. Who can really afford to you know, spend on stuff they're not going to use very often? But there's another way to clamp that mitre like this. Oh. Okay, so you cut your perfect motor, you're really happy with it. And you think, oh dear, I'm going to try and clamp that, but it's going to keep doing that. Or keep doing that. That's just no good. So you need a motor clamp. But you haven't got one. And you can't afford one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you how to make your own motor clamp. Mm-hmm. For pretty much nothing. Oh, exciting, eh? Okay, I'm going to bring you down to the bench that I am. So there we come. Oh, enough of my pretty face. Don't, don't, look at me. Don't, don't, don't look at my belly. No. Anyway, okay, so we're at the bench. We've got our mitre there. Just like that. We do have two little left clamps. You will need two little left clamps. But these are real cheap things, these are. They're like a couple of euros each. So they're not expensive, these little... Well, these ones come from Action. But you can get them in the UK and in America as well. And they're um, an F clamp or a C. Well, not C clamp, they're an F clamp. So yes, they're, they're good little things. They're quite handy, in fact. But, well, that's enough about the clamps. What we want to do, though, we want to clamp these together. Now, as you can probably imagine, how on earth do we clamp that? It's not possible, is it? You put that on, oh, see what happens? It's not going to work. Not at all. But there is a way. We can create our, our very own little clamping block, like this one. Not like this, as it is at the moment. We have to do something to it, which we will do. But first of all, what you have to do is you have to make sure you've got a 90 degree angle on that block so it's at perfect 90 degrees so what I've already done I've already checked it and it is perfectly at 90 degrees so that is going to be our two faces for which is 90 degrees around that corner can't be bad so if you think of it like this and like that Ooh, there you go and it's clamped up tight I'll be clamped up tight there but where do we put the clamp you could try and put it there like so but it's a long reach what will happen is as you tighten the clamp up, it'll try and do that. It's too far. But there's nowhere else to put that clamp onto. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a little alteration to this block of wood to allow you to use these, uh, you know, cheapy, cheapy F clamps. If you did a picture frame, you're going to want four of these. I'm just going to demonstrate it with the one. So, which corner was it again? <laughs> Let me double check which one is at 90 degrees. It's not that one, no. Nope. Is it that one? Do, 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 do. Ooh, I think it's that one. Yep, that's that one. So that's 90 degrees. So what we're going to do first, we're going to mark that. That's 90. So we know that is our 90 degrees. Then what I'm going to do is, I need to find the middle, ideally. So I'm going to put a from corner to the corner, like so. Put a little line in there. Then we're going to corner to the corner here. And like so. And now we've got the middle. Oh, what we're going to do with that? Well, I'm going to bring you over here. So, back up we go. Ooh, just like that. Oh, it's like magic, it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in there using the hole saw. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use a hole saw. You could use your jigsaw. You could cut it by hand if you like, with a coping saw. Or you could use a spade bit. You know, one of them cheeky little flat bits. You know, but I'm going to use a hole saw, just like this one. Because I don't need a job. So if you've got a hole saw, use a hole saw. If you haven't, it doesn't really matter as long as it's big enough to get the end of two clamps into the hole. You can test it and check it if you want. I was going to say something rude, but it's not, I mustn't do that on here. No. I was going to say something saucy. So you've got to make sure that will go in there on that side, but also a second one as well. So the hole has to be big enough to, to be able to facilitate two clamps. So we'll plonk this in here like so. And we'll cut that. I haven't got my sacrificial block on there at the moment, and I don't know where it is. I've lost it somehow. It'll probably end up in the fire. Not a great idea, but we'll worry about that. We know where the middle is. And once it goes part way through, I'll see a little dimple appear on the, on the other face, and then we'll flip it over and cut from the other face. So we don't end up, you know, trying to cut the actual table. So bring it up a little bit. I don't need to use a clamp or something to hold it down, but. I'm brutal, me. I'm brutal. And I've got strong hands. I hope so, anyway. 
So we're just drilling through there. Now that bit is a bit blunt, that one is. A bit of wax is a good idea as well. To put on your hole saw if you're using a hole saw. So now that should be all the way through. Oh, so yeah, got a hole all the way through there. But not all the way through with the actual hole saw cutter. So we just flip it over. That's what she said. And we just cut through the other space until it goes slack. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, we've got a ring. I'm just like burning ring of fire. I don't want that, no. Oh, that's a good old curry, a vindaloo. Maybe a hot madras. Whoa. Painful. Don't want that, no. Anyway, <laughs> so I've got a block of wood. And it's got a hole in it. At the moment, it's a bit rough for that. So what you can do if you want. You can actually, um, well, get a bit of sandpaper. It's pretty obvious, really. Let's, let's get that. So I'll just grab a bit of sandpaper out of my drawer, which I should have been prepared earlier, but I wasn't. So let's just get that around here like so. There you go. Get rid of all these furry bits. Which is always a good idea. Now, there's, another, there's something else you should really do with this. There's two things, actually. Um, we know the face that is going to be the 90 degrees because we marked it. Yeah? Um... You could run a little small route a bit around it if you want, but that is going to be our 90 degree face. So either you need to mark that, you could do that by putting a little hole in it, make it obvious, or you could mark it with a marker pen if you want. But the other thing you want to do is, if you put flat on here, it becomes obvious that that, so that if you could put like a, a 45 on there, do, 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 with a engineer square, so I'm going to use, you don't have to if you haven't got one. It's not that important, you can just, uh, so I've just marked that like so, and I'll cut that off, because what they'll do is, you see, that'll tell me that that piece here is the opposite of the 90 degrees. Now, it's a good idea just to cut a little bit off there, because in case there's any glue or anything like that, or, or any burrs in the corner, on the internal corners of your mitre, and you don't want that to interfere or be influenced for your actual um, little jig here, your little, sorry, little, little, your little clamping guide, Clamping guide, your little, I don't know, sous clamp, <laughs> like a sous chef. Anyway, I'm going to take this over to the saw over here, so we can just cut that angle off. Do -do 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 -do, for which we're going to be using the DeWalt Radio Alarm Saw. Now, I'm not editing this video, no, I'm winging it. You can probably tell. <laughs> and I'm going to just use my little uh, 45 degree jig. You know, you use whatever you got, but that allows me to get my 45, but I don't have to touch the saw, you see. That's why I always like to use a jig if I can, because uh, it saves me having to readjust and getting this perfectly set at 90 degrees again. So I've got that 45 off there. I'm just going to take a little bit off this corner here as well. So then that can't be interfered with as a glue, yeah, if the glue or there's a lump or anything like that, it's not going to influence the actual thing. But this is pretty much it. This is all you need to clamp your, well, your mitres. So let's spring you back to the bench over here. Now, like I say, I'm not editing this video. So it's all warts and all, this one is. Warts and all. Can't be bad, can it? You like a good old wart. <laughs> let's bring you back down to the bench yet again. So here is our mitre, and here is our sous clamp. I'm calling it a sous clamp because it's, it's like a sub clamp. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's there to assist the clamping. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to bring us to the core edge here. Just bring you up a little bit. There you go. I'll bring it to the edge because then I get the clamp on without any interference from the bench. I can see what's going on here. I would have glued this. I put my joint in if I was going to have a joint, if there's going to be a dowel in or anything like that, or a slip in the corner. I might have done that first before I start clamping. But all I've got to do now is clamp this way. Like so. Oh dear! That's a dodgy clamp. Let's get a different one, shall I? That one's slippy. Try a different one. That's the only thing with these cheap clamps. What happens is these things here, they wear on the edge of these clamps. And every so often you have to rough them up again. Because they're a bit soft. So they start again. Oh dear. Maybe we should edit this video. Or not. Oh, who cares? Really. 
So we're going to clamp on there like so. Now I'm not clamping too tight there, all right? There's a reason for that. At the moment, it's not right up to the edge. So I'm going to bring the other clamp here. And you see the hole has to be big enough to make room for both ends of your clamps. So whatever size hole you decide to put there, it's really got to be big enough to be able to hold two clamps. Now, as you can see at the moment, what's happening here? There's a big gap there. So you just have to rearrange and just, you know, move them about until you're, you're happy, you're satisfied that your joint is good. But as you can see, when you tighten your clamps up, the joint doesn't slip. No. Now these two bits of wood are actually not the same thickness, or the same width, sorry. But as you can see, look. So if you had four of these, you could do a picture frame, for instance. Simples. And what did that cost me? Well, a problem, if you're a woodworker, you're likely to already have your clamps, because these are probably the cheapest clamps that you can buy. Let's bring you back up. And you might already have a scrap of plywood, or a piece of chipboard. Or even a couple of bits of pine that's been glued together like that. Anything will work, pretty much. Just make them to sue whatever you're going to be making. So if, for instance, you're going to be doing little old picture frames, these are an ideal size for most picture frames. Make four of those, and then you've got four clamps. You can clamp your picture frame up, and it's all hunky-dory. Can't be bad, can it? Or if it's just one, like this, you know, uh, to be fair, I'd probably use this more often than I'd bother with that. Because that's a faff. This thing's all floppy and faffy like. They're, they're quite good, and you can get a lot of force with them. They're better if you screw them down, actually. But that, you saw how easy it was. Especially when I changed the, the dodgy clamp. And you see how easy it is to make. And you can make as many of them as you like. So it can't be bad, no, nope, not at all. So if you want to do a, well, 45 degree, or a 90 degree um, corner, so you've got two 45s such as this, like a picture frame, make yourself four of those little blocks like this and there you have it you have your sue clamp that's it i've patented that name now that's my name for them. it's a sue clamp as in you know it's kind of an under clamp no okay anyway don't forget to click like and subscribe and maybe that little bell icon because then you get one fuzzy finger in your pocket every time i upload another video and i hope you'd be excited about that and um i'm gonna try and uh, upload more videos if i can I need to spend more time in my workshop. It's quite a nice place to be, really, and playing with toys. Can't be bad. Anyway, ta-ta.